Hi, this is Jason here at RoofSnap. And I'm Katrina. Thanks for joining us today on our uh, uh, Tuesday live demo. We're going to be doing um, a little bit of uh, project measuring here. Um, should we uh, talk about what device we're on real quick, I suppose? Yeah. Uh, so for today, we are going to be on the large iPad Pro. Um, iOS definitely has a really nice interaction. Um, when you when you draw on the screen, it has a good feel to it. Um, Apple came out with uh, a new $329 iPad, mm -hmm. just called iPad, that uh, we've got a few of and they work great. Uh, so if you are an iOS user, um, definitely check those out. Of course, nothing's going to beat uh, one of the Pro models because they are the fastest ones out there. Uh, and if you per prefer Android, then definitely check out some of our other videos where we have shown how to draw um, a roof using an Android device, anything from a Chromebook to a Samsung Galaxy phone to even some of the nice um, Samsung tablets that mm -hmm. they have. Those are fast and uh, functional as well. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully that's given everybody enough time to join the live video. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, and Katrina, feel free to hop in and interrupt me at any point. No, oh, I shall. <laughs> Um, let's go ahead and start a new project. That's one of the main buttons here on the on the first screen that you'll see when you log in to RoofSnap on iOS. And when you tap on that, you'll be able to go ahead and select your office. So let's pick the RoofSnap demo office and give it a project name. We'll just call it Test for Demo. Did I spell that right? You did. I had oh, a period, but must have hit the space bar <laughs> twice. Apple likes to do that. And go ahead and tap on the Done button. Now, we didn't put in any address information yet, and we don't absolutely need to to draw a roof, especially if we're relying on GPS okay. to find us at the house where we might be sitting in our truck right in the front, right in the driveway. Um, but we can always hit the Edit button here in the upper right-hand corner and go in and begin to fill out the different city, state, zip information that we need. You can also put in billing info and insurance details. Nice. Now, I'm going to hit the back button here in the upper left-hand corner. Come all the way back out to this uh, same screen here with all these tiles. And if you are sitting in the driveway, I want to show you how the project map, map works. So let's tap on that. And it's going to use GPS and zoom right in on my location. Of course, I'm in a commercial building, and RoofSnap does work very well for commercial properties. But most of our customers want to use it to measure residential roofs. So let's go ahead and just grab a very basic residential roof. I think I want this hipped roof here. Sounds good. All right, now there's a pin on that house. And Katrina, why is there a pin on that house? Uh, that means that it is already a project in the account. Yep, so one of the cool things about the project map is it will put a pin on any house that you've already drawn. So you can geographically see where all of your yep. jobs are. If we zoom out here and just take a look at Columbus, well, we're going to see pins all over the place. <laughs> look at that. But let's just uh, go right back in. We can, you can see we've drawn about every house on this street. Let's draw, <laughs> let's draw a new house. Okay. Let's do that one there. So say, let's say I'm currently sitting in the driveway in my truck. Mm -hmm. Well, rather than um, typing in the address, I could just press and hold and drop a pin right on that house and grab the address automatically. Nice. Go ahead and tap on Create. And now it's done the same thing we just did, but automatically created a project pulling in the address for me. Still have to give it a name. How's that? Perfect. Um, and put it in the correct office where I have my pricing set up, which is going to be that demo office. Gotcha. Go ahead and tap on the Done button. Now we are in the project. Here it is, test for demo two. We're looking at the details. The very next phase uh, is sketch. And if you're still seeing the word roof snap here, that means you need to go to the app store and update to the newest version That's of right. roof snap. This is just released, yep. change that name. Change some of the language here just to make it a little cleaner and a little clearer. Uh, estimate, well that used to be specifications. Mm -hmm. Why use specifications? F a five-syllable word when you can use a two-syllable <laughs> word. So let's jump into Sketch. So uh, if you've been patiently waiting for us to get to the meat and bones of using RoofSnap, this is it right here. Thanks for hanging out. 
Um, what we've done is we've gone to sketch and we're seeing the image from top down in Google. Well, I don't love this image because the tree is covering the rear section of this house. Mm -hmm. I want to see what near map has to offer and I can do that by tapping on this near map button in the upper right hand corner. Gotcha. Near map, the first thing they're going to show me is all the available imagery dates that they have. By, uh, May, March 5th from this year going all the way back to June 5th of 2015. Tap on OK, it's going to tell me the price is five bucks. I'm going to tap on OK. And this image here, this is just a good representation. The left side is what you're typically going to see with Google. We couldn't see the whole house. We couldn't draw the line straight. It's very distorted. It's very skewed. But here on the right, this is near map. Everything is very straight down. Mm -hmm. Everything is very clear. The resolution is much higher. And we used an image where there are no leaves on the trees. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to try to do right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit the purchase button. And it's going to load in the most recent near map image first. We see March 5th up here in the upper left hand. Let's try September 20th. Now that one's good, but again, a little bit of tree coverage. March 23rd, no tree coverage. <laughs> no leaf coverage, I should say. Leaves are off the trees. Um, March 22nd, they, they flew it two days in a row, but a little bit of strong shadows. So far, March 23rd is my favorite. And let's settle in on March 23rd. To use Roof Snap efficiently and effectively, you're going to want to take a second right here using these lines and make the image as straight as you can. Check the ridge, check the eaves, maybe even check the side. And once you've got it nice and straight, Put it right back in the middle, zoom in all the way, and then tap on snap and start drawing in the upper right hand corner. This is what loads the image to scale into our drawing screen. Mm -hmm. So we picked the image, we snapped the image, now we have an image on which we can draw. Great. Right now we're in the pan and zoom mode, which is down here. We've got lots of different buttons and I encourage you to check them all out. I'm not going to tap on every single one. But we've got north, east, south, west. Those are imagery buttons from Bing. Check those out. Uh, down here in the bottom right corner, we've got Google Street View. Let's tap on Google Street View and see the house from, from the front. There it is. Gives us an idea of what, we're, of what we're dealing with here. We can go all the way around the neighborhood if we want to. <laughs> Scroll around. The other button next to it down here in the bottom right, this is Apple's 3D imagery. Let's go ahead and tap on that. Apple's 3D imagery is really cool because you can look at the house from any angle. Nice. From straight overhead, that's two fingers together up and down. You can go overhead or you can go all the way down to a very low in the sky view and see it from all different perspectives. Another cool thing we can do in here is we can get pitch. So what I'm going to do is and this is a little complicated and we have some very detailed videos but I'm basically putting my cursor close to the gutter with my horizontal line on the ridge and I'm gonna rotate it around this time because uh, Apple moved moved the image on me so same thing just opposite side putting the cursor crosshairs very close to the gutter but still on the roof always on the roof and the vertical, excuse me, the horizontal line across the ridge. Gotcha. Then I'm going to change the angle from directly overhead to more of a bird's eye view. There's a magnification button here in the upper left hand corner. We're really going to need to zoom in on this. So let's go ahead and magnify. And if you can't tell what happened here, we created basically a straight line, a, a, a reference mm -hmm. between where the hips meet the ridge up here coming all the way down to this point on the roof. That is straight down the slope, that invisible line that would connect those two points. Gotcha. Well, let's go ahead and connect those two points with a pitch card. So if we tap on this icon up here in the left-hand corner, this is gonna pull down a virtual pitch card. And this pitch card does change based on the angle that we're viewing the roof. And the goal is to connect right here with the top of where the hips meet the ridge. And when we use the correct pitch, we'll see those two points connect. And when we get to the 412, well, that's a line going straight up that slope, letting us know that this is indeed a 412 pitch on this roof. Wonderful.
we hit the minus buttons to go all the way back and the X button to close Apple's 3D imagery. 412 pitch, well, let's draw this thing up and get it labeled. Nice. Drawing tools and labeling tools are down here across the bottom. Drawing tool is on the far left. If you just tap on it, you'll see the icon gets a dark blue color. And when you put your finger on the screen, you'll see a cursor. Well, this is a two finger process, right? So when you put the cursor on the screen in order to start the line, you're just gonna tap the screen with any other finger and see that cursor turn green. And then you can draw out this yellow line. Now, I may not be perfectly straight. Those cursor tails kind of help me, show me if I'm straight. But if I wanna make sure that this line is perfectly straight, I wanna come up here and turn on 90 mode. So now when I turn on 90 mode, as soon as I get to straight, it pops right to straight, up and down, awesome. but also pops to straight, left and right. See how it just kind of snaps right to it? Mm -hmm. Well, let's turn it up a little bit. Let's go into the settings, and let's turn that snap tolerance all the way up to 25. We call this um, strong snap. <laughs> so let's draw this line again. <coughs> so now, when I get close to vertical, oh my goodness, look at that. It just jumps right to it. I'm sorry, horizontal. Mm -hmm. And then when we want to finish this line and change direction, we tap on the screen again, but I'm not going to pick up my drawing finger. That drawing finger stays put. See how I just tap the screen there? And then I'm going to jump up. Vertical, tap the screen again, come over. Tap the screen again, come down. But this time, it's going to go right and find that point to the left and, and just be even with it. Come over to the right. See how important it is to make sure this image is perfectly straight before mm -hmm. we start? I should have spent a little more time <laughs> getting this image as perfectly straight as I can. But every time I get to the end of a line, I tap the screen. So there, we're at the end, so we tap. I'm gonna come across, and it's okay. I'm, I'm off by just a little bit, but it's okay. Uh, tap on the screen there. Come all the way up, and here it's going to snap. But this time the cursor is going to change color. See when it turns to red? Yeah. That lets me know I've connected to that point. Being connected is very important. Don't let uh, the social media um, <laughs> tycoons out there convince you otherwise. Being connected <laughs> is, uh, is definitely a must. See how the whole thing is shaded in blue? Mm -hmm. Well, right now we've just made one facet. We just outlined the roof. Right. So let's carve it up. Let's add the hips. So let's come down. And yes, you can still draw diagonals when you're in 90 mode. It's just when you get close to a vertical or horizontal, it's going to prefer that over a diagonal line. Now, I just started a line from an existing point. I feel like I should, I should show what I do there. Yeah. So when I bring my cursor down to that point, I get a big red circle. Well, I have to tap to start the line. And then when I get out here to this point, I have to tap to set the line. And then I come up and I'm looking for a big red circle, tap to lock it in. Then I lift my finger. I took my drawing finger off when I got to the end of that last line. Okay. Come back here, tap to start that line. Oh, I think I, I, think I moved it. I'm gonna turn 90 mode off for a second. Now, if I put my cursor on any point and I press and hold and I leave it there for about a second, I can pick up any point and I can reposition it. Nice. So if you, if you drew it and it's not quite where you want it to be, just bring your cursor in, grab that point, and bring it down and set it right where it needs to be. Now I'm going to tap on the screen to start a line right off of that point. Come down here, tap on the screen again. And we've got about five more lines. So two hips, so let's get this one, and then jump back over to this one. Finger off the screen, finger back on the screen, set the cursor, tap on the screen. And uh, I'm gonna use 90 mode again. I'm gonna turn that on. And yes, you could turn 90 mode off and on in mid drawing. One of that straight up and down. Tap on the screen to lock in that line, then get my two valleys. And that was a pretty easy roof and that usually only takes a couple minutes to draw up something right. like that. For sure. Now when we go to facets, you can see it's all carved up. We have pitch values for every individual roof slope. Perfect. Well, we know what the pitches are, so let's go ahead and go to facets here <clears throat> and come up here to pitch. Grab the 412 by tapping on it. 
And then let's just hit apply to all. That'll put 412 on every slope. Nice. All these yellow lines, though, are we accurate yet? Not yet. Why not? Uh, <laughs> because we need to label our lines. We do, we do, because an eave is a horizontal line, and a valley is a diagonal line, and a hip is a diagonal line. Until we tell the app what all these lines are, they won't give us appropriate um, exterior you know, edge, edge measurements. Mm -hmm. Well, that was easy. So what I did there is I hit edges. And then I highlighted the, the line label that I want to use, the eaves, and I just did my entire perimeter. Nice. But let's go ahead. Uh, we don't have any rakes on this one. Let's go straight to ridge. Tap on ridge, ridge. Tap on hip. Then tap on all the hip lines. Then tap on valley. See, it's not much to label up your lines. It only takes a couple seconds. Yeah. So this is an accurate roof drawing. The only thing that you could do at this point um, is, uh, well, you, not the only thing, but the most likely thing that you would do is maybe put a few inspection pins and a few photos on here. Gotcha. So, uh, Katrina, hand me, uh, actually, no, I'll take a picture of the duck. Ah, okay. And they're like, what is he talking about? Our, well, our famous ducks. We have ducks scattered. all over the office. <laughs> <laughs> so, when we're in pins mode, which is another button down here at the bottom, you'll see that inspection pins are one of the options. And uh, let's go ahead Oh wait, I hit the wrong one. Pins, inspection pins. There we go. So let's say there's a leak area in the valley. So let's highlight the leak area, put it in the valley, press and hold on that pin, and it's gonna let you choose a photo from your photos library or take a photo. So let's take a photo. There's a duck under the conference table here. There we go. <laughs> now let's just say this was the photo of the valley uh, that is leaking. Go ahead and tap on use photo in the bottom right hand corner. And then let's press and hold again and let's edit some notes. Just say here is the leak. Now we could put pins all over this. Pins that represent different materials, chimneys, soil pipe boots, um, skylights, flashing kits, uh, crickets and so forth and so on. You could add different types of materials as pins but any pin you put on here you can add a photo. So it's very useful to be able to do a um, image inspection slash, um, well, here's where all the accessories go, um, sort of report. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of report, that's what we want to show you. That's what we're really ultimately getting to. So let's hit done, and that's going to save the project. It's also going to ask us about cut waste. So we have an algorithm that will calculate the cut waste based on um, real production values, Assuming that you're installing architectural shingles and assuming that you are using a closed single cut valley. Um, if you are using a different type of valley, like a woven or a metal, then this um, percentage may not be quite right for you. And if you're using three tab or some heavyweight uh, or some other types of shingles, uh, this, this may not be right for you. So you can always tap on no, but we're going to go and tap on yes. If you want to edit that waste percentage, just come down here to measurements. And you can go in and you can manually type in any waste percentage that you want. Let's go ahead and up it to 15% since it was a hipped roof. Okay. And it recalculates our total squares. It also shows us our other measurements on this screen. But what we really want to see is the document, mm -hmm. the PDF, the one that we can email. Absolutely. Well, documents, PDFs, they all live down here on the Documents tab. So let's go there. And let's run down to sketch reports. This is what we want, the sketch report. Generate new. It's going to take just a few seconds for uh, the, uh, the app here to send the images and create the document. Uh, but as soon as, uh, well, there it is. Sketchreport.pdf. We tap on that, and it opens it right up here within the app. And this report will have all of the customer information on it and would have all of your specific contact information on it once you've set up your account. Gotcha. Same thing with your logo. Right now it's got our RoofSnap logo, but it could have your company logo right here on this document. The primary image that we use to measure the roof, yay for near map. <laughs> Being aspect images, those buttons we told you to tap on, these are the images you'll get to see if you use those uh, for reference purposes. <clears throat> then a pitch breakdown, all 412 on all slopes. Finally, here on this page, we have measurements, individual line measurements for each section, total squares, actual squares, a breakdown by pitch, 
line measurements, and then we didn't label up any categories. That's another video. Uh, but had we labeled up categories, you'd see those there as well. Then the next page has breakdown by area. And then my favorite are the accessories page. So any of those pins that we drop in any of the photos, we could have 50 photos on here, 70, we could 800, however many photos you want. Mm -hmm. This could become a very robust inspection report for the homeowner, for the insurance adjuster, uh, for whomever you might uh, need to provide this information. And to get them that information, you just tap on the share button up here in the upper right hand corner. Here you have the ability to mail it, email it that is, uh, add it to the cloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, all of your different options. Wonderful. You can even send it as a text message <laughs> or as an iMessage. I still need to try that. Yep. I've not tried it yet. I've heard it can, can be done. Yeah, so that's pretty much it on the measuring side. Now we have many, many other videos about building an estimate, about uh, you know labeling up the roof with more line labels and more facet labels, tons of videos on how to set up your account, putting in your specific materials and pricing, uh -huh. um, and on and on. So check out our YouTube our YouTube channel. Uh, if you're on Android, check out the Android FAQ videos. And if you're on iOS, just check out the standard FAQ videos. Mm -hmm. uh, those are playlists. Playlists within our YouTube channel. Check those out, and we'll put up a link, uh, I'd say, maybe here. <laughs> uh, not for you live viewers, though. But we'll put a link here to some of our other videos. Uh, please join us again. We love to keep you guys updated as to what's going on. I'm Jason. And I'm Katrina. Thanks so much. Yep. Have a great day.